Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today, we're doing a sew along to Vogue 7784, View F. Vogue 7784 was published in 2003 and the pattern envelope includes patterns and instructions to make seven lined hats. Each hat is offered in three sizes. Hat A has a self fringe. Hat B has a quilted top. Hat C and D have contrast sections and top stitched brims. Hats E and F have larger top stitch brims and hat G is self lined. I bought this pattern on sale from Fabricland over 10 years ago. The suggested fabrics for View F were denim and pinwheel corduroy, but I decided to make my hat out of a black velvet with a swirling gold pattern. I bought my fabric at Value Village Thrift Store on Oxford Street in London, Ontario during a store opening celebration. It was marked at $39.99 for 8.5 meters, but I had a coupon for 20% off, so I paid $31.99. That broke down to $3.76 a meter. Wow! This pattern shows layouts for 115 and 150 centimeter wide fabric, but my fabric was 140 centimeters wide, so I used my own layout, making the best use of the fabric and keeping with the nap of the velvet. Since I had 8.5 meters of it, I had plenty of fabric left over for other projects, including Simplicity 8243, a fun jumper. The link to the video with that sew along is right here at the top of the screen. In addition to the jumper, I also made Butterick 6523, a classic blazer. The link to the video with that sew along is right here at the top of the screen. I also refashioned a pair of skinny jeans into flared bell bottom jeans using the same fabric. The link to the video with that DIY is right here at the top of the screen. I also had enough fabric for Simplicity 9553, a vintage bag. The link to the video with that sew along for Simplicity 9553 is right here at the top of the screen. The lining fabric is a pinky peach with black designs that I bought about 10 years ago from Lens Mill Store in London, Ontario. I use this fabric all the time and I have lots of it left over. This fabric was used for Vogue 8992, a lined wrap dress that's fitted through the bust and has the front extending into a collar, princess seams, inside ties, and hook and eye closing. It has narrow hems and top stitching and includes a stitched hem on the sleeves. You may recognize that dress from my Vogue Designer Sewing Pattern Haul video. The link to that video is right here at the top of the screen. I used black sew-in non-woven pre-shrunk interfacing that I bought from Fabricland on sale. It was regularly $1.49 a package that included a piece of interfacing measuring 1 meter by 55 centimeters, but I bought it on sale at the low price of 50 cents. I did not use fusible interfacing for this project because the iron will pucker and pull the velvet in different ways. After I cut out and marked my pattern, I pinned the short ends of the band piece right sides together. Then I folded under half an inch or 13 millimeters on the long edges of each of the ties. Then I folded and pinned the tie on the fold line, having the edges even. When sewing a pattern, I don't always follow the instructions in the order that they're written, so if you're following along in the guide, you'll see that I jump around from step to step. Next, I pin the interfacing to the wrong side 
of each of the brim sections. With the right sides together, I pinned each side to the center section, matching the notches. Then, with the right sides together, I pinned each side lining and center lining section, matching the notches. At the sewing machine, I sewed the side to the center section and removed the pins as I sewed. I used black Coats & Clark all-purpose dual-duty thread that I bought from Value Village thrift stores. Usually I don't use secondhand thread when sewing my garments, but this thread was in a big bag of brand new Coats & Clark thread for $1.99. I think that there were 20 spools of black and white thread in the bag, so it was quite a steal. I checked the thread before buying it, and it was very strong and actually newer than some of the thread in my sewing box. I used a Schmetz Universal Needle sized 75 or 11 to sew this velvet hat. This is the same needle size that I used for my Simplicity Velvet Jumper and my Butterick Velvet Jacket. Then I sewed the seam in the band. This seam allowance will be trimmed to a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. My next step was to edge stitch the open edge of the ties. To edge stitch, stitch close to the finished edge or seam. I found some great tips and tricks for sewing velvet on the Fabricland website. It said, make sure your pattern pieces are secure and won't shift during the sewing process. If using the hand basting method, try using a diagonal stitch pattern as this will work best to ensure that your fabric stays secure as you stitch it up. Alternatively, Temporary basting spray holds layers of velvet together and prevents shifting while sewing. The spray should disappear from the fabric easily, but always test a scrap piece first. Then I sewed the interfacing to the wrong side of each of the brim sections. This is the black sew-in interfacing that I bought from Fabricland. It was such a great price. The pattern's instructions did not have any tips or specific instructions for the interfacing, so I followed Simplicity 8243. The instructions recommended for non-fusible interfacing to machine based half an inch or 1.3 centimeters from the cut edges and then trim the interfacing close to the stitching. Usually I use fusible interfacing in my garments because it's quick and easy to apply and can be used on most fabrics. I chose to use sew-in interfacing on this project because I was concerned that if I pressed the interfacing in velvet incorrectly, I would ruin the nap of the velvet. My mom's Simplicity Sewing Book from 1975 had some great recommendations for pressing velvet. It said, Napped or pile fabrics such as fleece, deep pile fake furs, corduroy and velvet 
must be steamed rather than pressed to prevent the nap or pile from flattening. When you press a fabric with a long nap, press in the direction of the nap using one of two methods. A piece of self fabric can be used as a press cloth when pressing on the right side. When you press a seam on the inside, use self fabric underneath the seam on the right side of the fabric. Or press the fabric pile side down on a needle board. After pressing, softly brush the fabric in the direction of the pile. The Simplicity Sewing Book also mentioned embroidered fabrics. It said, raised surface designs are pressed on a softly padded board from the wrong side. Use light pressure on woven designs and embossed or embroidered fabrics since heavier pressure will flatten the design. Then I sewed the side linings to the center lining section and removed the pins as I sewed. I'm a big fan of hats and I bought a couple of books on hat making. One of them is called The Making of a Milliner. I'll post a link to the book on Amazon.ca in the description box of this video. This book has nine hat making projects with full instructions. I love looking at the photos as the author goes step by step through the hat making process. This book starts out with a section about choosing a hat. It says, A hat is a wonderful and fashionable accessory. It should be a reflection of you as a person. There is no right or wrong time to wear a hat. If you feel like wearing a hat to the grocery store or the opera, let your personality shine through your hat. It continued, yes, everyone can wear a hat. It is simply a matter of finding the shape that best suits your face shape and hairstyle. The position of the hat on the head should be adjusted for the most flattering effect. A hat can look completely different when worn on the back of the head rather than worn on the front of the head with a slight tilt to the side. Just a little tweak can make a world of difference. The author recommended every hat should be worn with a slight tilt. Before I continue with the sew along, please share this video with your friends and family. I would love to help others sew and refashion on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasure that I find at thrift shops. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now back to the sew along. Once the crown was sewn together, I pinned down the seams to be edge stitched. This fabric is gorgeous. I love the gold embroidery. Then I pinned the center back seam of each of the brim sections. This seam allowance will be trimmed to 3 eighths of an inch or 13 millimeters. At the sewing machine, I edge stitched the crown of the hat. The Simplicity Sewing Book had some tips on sewing velvet. It had a section about napped and pile fabrics. It said, if garment pieces are cut with the nap running in opposite directions, the sections of the completed garment will appear to have been cut from different shades of the same color. The direction in which you lay the pattern depends on the fabric. 
Determine the direction of the nap or pile by stroking the fabric with your fingers on the lengthwise grain. If the surface feels smooth, you are stroking in the direction of the nap. If it feels rough, you are stroking against the nap. Mark the nap with a chalk arrow on the back. Then I sewed the center back seam of each brim section. Once sewn, this seam will be trimmed to 3 eighths of an inch or 13 millimeters. The Simplicity Sewing Book continued. Short napped or pile fabrics include velvet, velveteen, corduroy, and suede cloth. The nap should run towards the top in a garment of velvet or velveteen for the richest, darkest color and down in corduroy or suede cloth for better fabric wear. Then I pin the lining inside the crown with the wrong sides together matching the small and large circles. The raw edges will be basted together. Then I turned under the seam allowance on the unmarked edge of the band. The instructions said to press under the seam allowance, but I didn't because I didn't want to ruin the velvet. I basted this instead. Then I pinned each side of the seam of the brim sections to be edge stitched. The making of a milliner book emphasized that you want to choose a hat that fits appropriately. If it's too small, you'll probably end up with a headache. If it's too big, it will slip over your eyes. A hat should fit comfortably with no pain or discomfort. I like this Vogue pattern came in three sizes so I could choose the best size for me. Then I edge stitched each side of the seam of the brim sections. One of the things that I learned when sewing velvet was that stitching lines tend to show because of its surface texture. Threads Magazine wrote that it's best to choose styles with minimal design details such as darts, seams, buttonholes, and top stitching. Designs with simple lines and semi-fitted to loose-fitting styles best display the velvet's qualities. Gathers, soft folds, and drapey styles work better than those that are fitted and contoured. Then I sewed the lining inside the crown. Some other great tips from Threads Magazine for sewing velvet are hand baste with one or more of three basting methods, double, backstitch, or diagonal basting. Loosen the thread tension, hold the fabric taut while you sew, use a walking foot, Teflon foot or roller foot, and finally stitch with tissue paper or stabilizer between the layers and between the fabric and the feed dogs. Then I pinned the brim sections right sides together and matched the centers and seams. These brim sections will be sewn together along the outer edge. One thing that I forgot to do was fold one of each of the ends under when sewing the tie ends. In order to hide the raw edge, I folded over one end on each of the ties on the short edge and then folded it over again. Then I pinned the band to the lower edge of the crown and matched the large circles. At the sewing machine, I edge stitched the upper edge of the band to the crown. The making of the milliner book detailed how you can measure your head for a hat. It said, in order to purchase the right hat, you must know your own head measurement. If you go to a milliner to have a custom hat made, they will measure your head for you. To measure your own head, get a tape measure and locate the bump on the back of your head. Some bumps are more pronounced than others. Place the tape measure underneath the bump and wrap it above your ears and finish approximately one inch above your eyebrows. The tape measure should fit comfortably as you would like your hat to fit. The average head size is 22.5 inches, but this can vary depending on how much or how little hair you have. If you change your hairstyle often, 
This may affect the fit of your hat. Then I sewed the outer edge of the pinned brim sections. I'm a big fan of large brimmed hats. These hats have a traditional shape for the horse races and are useful in the summer to block the sun. The making of the milliner book indicated that this type of hat looks great on a longer face shape, such as heart, oval, and triangle. This hat also looks great on people with longer hair and who have some height. My next step was to sew the tie ends. This was not part of the instructions. This was how I fixed my mistake. The instructions said, press under half an inch or 13 millimeters on the long edges and one end of each tie. Since I did not want to unpick the velvet to fix this, I folded over the end twice and sewed it. The problem with this was the fabric was so thick that I was at a loss of how to sew it. I manually turned the wheel on my sewing machine to get it to sew through this thickness. If this didn't work, then I would have had to hand sew it, but I was lucky enough that my Kenmore sewing machine plowed through it. Then I trimmed the seam along the outside of the brim. Then I turned the brim right side out. The making of a milliner book suggested other hat types for other face shapes. For example, the flipped up brim hat is a good choice for someone who wants a large brim hat but may get swallowed underneath it. This hat looks great on round and square face shapes. It also suits people with shorter hair because the hat allows the hair to show more on the one side. Then I top stitch the outer edge of the brim. The instruction said make three additional rows of top stitching, spacing three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters apart. At the sewing machine, I top stitch the outer edge of the brim. The second hat making book I have is called Saturday Night Hats. Saturday Night Hats is quick and easy hat making for the downtown girl. In this book, Eugenia Kim teaches you how to make 30 of her designs with patterns and instructions so easy you can start the project Saturday afternoon and wear it out Saturday night. I love every single hat that's in this book. I bought this book off amazon.ca for $18.29. It was a secondhand copy, but in fantastic condition. I'll post a link to this book on amazon.ca in the description box of this video. Then I sewed the additional three rows of top stitching, spacing each row three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters apart. Saturday Night Hats shows you how to sew the Prodigal Sun Hat. The hat with the big floppy brim that can transform you into a rich hippie a la Talitha Getty, or with large shades, a glamour girl on holiday. No longer worn to just shade us from the sun, the sun hat, which came to encompass all big brimmed hats, developed into a fashion accessory both on and off the beach.
Then I pinned the brim to the crown. The instruction said, pin the brim to the lower edge of the crown, matching the small and large circles and clipping the brim where necessary. I didn't clip the brim at this point. The making of a milliner book suggested other hat types for other face shapes. Another example was the fedora. Most face shapes and hair lengths can wear this hat. Fedoras can come in various brim lengths, but most are flat and stick straight in the front or have a very slight bend so the brim doesn't cover the face. Worn with a slight tilt, this hat is a superb everyday look. Saturday Night Hat said, A sun hat looks stunning with long California girl beach hair streaming to her shoulders. You can also pull your hair into two loose braids and leave the ends unbound for a glamorous hippie look. Let your skin go bare, save for a sweep of bronzer. You wouldn't wear foundation or powder on the beach and the hat's large brim casts a flattering shadow that makes imperfections less noticeable anyway. If your hair is shorter, slick it back and fasten it at the nape. Let the silhouette be all about the big floppy hat. For a film star on holiday look, skip the bronzer and go for porcelain skin instead then paint on an immaculate red lip. Then I sewed the brim to the lower edge of the crown. Saturday Night Hat said, the shape of the sun hat is super flattering for almost every face shape. The big brim acts as a frame for the wearer, so your face always looks 10 pounds thinner with one on. Sun hats look movie star dramatic when one side of the brim covers part of your face. If you want to go more bohemian, make sure the sun fades up your hat just a little. Also, playing on the beach will beat it up a bit. Then I pinned the ties to the hat. The instruction said, try on hat. Position the ties on the side of the hat as desired. Mark. Remove hat. Pin the ties to the markings, having the raw edges even. Then I pinned the gross green ribbon to the brim. The instruction said, pin the ribbon to the brim having one long edge slightly over half an inch or 13 millimeters along the seam line and turning under one end and lapping over the remaining end at the center back. Stitch along the seam line. Saturday Night Hats continued. Of course, sun hats look great with bikini tops, sarongs, short shorts, and sundresses. Just don't go over boho by pairing a frayed edge straw hat with fringed cutoffs. Instead, wear your straw sun hat with a floral prairie girl dress a la Laura Ingalls Wilder. For the evening, you can do the 70s sophisticate play suit in a light fabric and color. Don't wear anything underneath the jacket and go for a deep V of cleavage. Then accessorize with metallic high-heeled sandals and you're ready to party. Then I sewed the gross green ribbon and ties to the hat.
Saturday Night Hats had some great tips on hat storage. It said, a hat box is a wise investment. It only takes a few moments of your time to pack up your hat, but this will ensure a lifetime of wear. You can even stack hats with similar crowns on top of each other to maximize your storage space. However, if your chapeau is in season and you'll be wearing it frequently, you can hang it on a hook or coat rack for safekeeping and easy access. If you can't even find the time to acquire a hat box, you could at least stuff the crown with paper and store the hat in a bag to protect it from the elements and from being chewed by your mini Maltese. If you're on tour with the band, cruising in Cozumel or any place you want to take off your hat, be sure to put your hat on a soft surface where possible. If the brim of your hat slants down, make sure you let the slant hang off the surface when you set down the hat. Placing it on a hard surface will warp the brim over time. My final step was to hand sew the gross grain ribbon to the lining. The instruction said, turn ribbon to the inside, turn brim down, tack ribbon to lining if desired. I chose to do this so the inside of the hat was finished. Here is the finished hat. by Halston dress. It was a Christmas present from my partner Brad. He bought it at the Hudson's Bay Company and about more than a year later I refashioned it. I removed the twisted bodice, flared the skirt, and added sleeves. I bought the secret tights at the Hudson's Bay Company and the expressions boots at Value Village thrift stores. The necklace is from the Salvation Army charity store. I hope you enjoyed this sew along to Vogue 7784. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. I love sharing my new, vintage, and out of print sewing patterns and my tips, tricks, quick fixes, and even my mistakes when sewing along with you. I also love sharing my wonderful fabric finds that I thrifted from charity shops as well as brand new fabric online and in store. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and press the bell so you receive a notification when I release a new video. If you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching! See you next time!